Well, yeah, the usual suspects are at it again. <sighs> Let's talk about Zelda's 35th anniversary. Let's talk about the games up on the screen, Twilight Princess HD, The Wind Waker HD, and why two video game journalists are still adamant these games are coming, despite uh, some issues. This year, the original Legend of Zelda game reaches its 35th anniversary. While we don't have any campaigns or other Nintendo Switch games planned, we've been working on this Game & Watch system Hey folks, so uh, today we are starting a brand new giveaway. Uh, there's a link down in the description for it. We are giving away two copies of Skyward Sword HD. We will be announcing the winners of those copies the day before Skyward Sword HD comes out on July 15th next month. I decided to start the giveaways early instead of waiting for July 1st because, well, um, I want to get the copies to people in time. And I'm going to be gone at the end of July. So like it would actually make not a lot of sense to keep running giveaways while I'm gone. That I mean, how am I going to announce the winner when I'm not here? <laughs> so we're going to have a Skyward Sword HD giveaway happening from now uh, all the way through the 15th of July. Uh, it'll be every single video. You can get additional entries by commenting on the videos um, and, and all that jazz as well. So commenting, liking, all that. There'll be It'll be explained in the description, but good luck to everybody. Now, look, I'm not going to sit here and pretend uh, that all of our coverage of the 35th anniversary of Zelda has been correct over the last couple of months. In fact, it appears none of it was correct. <laughs> we have video after video reporting on rumors uh, and reports from various game journalists and obviously other inside sources that told us a lot of different things were going to happen for Zelda's 35th anniversary. Everything from the pipe dream of Ocarina of Time HD and Majora's Match HD, which I was consistent in saying I didn't think was going to happen, uh, all the way to things like things I thought were probable, like the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD. Obviously, we talked about the potential of a game and watch at one point, which we did end up getting. And things like a custom switch system as a possibility, just a possibility, not necessarily you know rumored, and a bunch of other uh, potential things in there or from the Oracle series and Grezzo doing things and the history that suggests that Grezzo has something in the works. Reality is that obviously none of this stuff has come to pass. And while we can't dismiss the fact that the you know producer of the Legend of Zelda series could have been telling a fib uh, to allow Skyward Sword to have its own little window of success, uh, we also have to understand that at least as far as the facts bear out at the moment, there are no further plans beyond the Zelda Game & Watch for the 35th anniversary. They didn't even label Breath of the Wild 2 or Skyward Sword HD as part of that celebration. So those are just things that are going to happen. But what's interesting is a lot of the Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker HD stuff had a lot of confirmation from things like Andy Robinson from Video Game Chronicle and Jeff Grubb from Gamesbeat, two video game journalists who obviously have reputations on the line when they talk about this kind of stuff. Now, we all know investigative journalism and reporting is not always 100% accurate and plans do change. We need to be at least willing to admit that sometimes there might be plans and targets for things and those plans and targets change. At, I mean, we just have to look all the way back to the fact that you know Breath of the Wild was supposed to release in 2015. We didn't get it till March of 2017. So we already have public examples of plans changing, let alone plans changing for things that are not yet announced. So yeah, but obviously when we talk about this, because we're about to bring up Andy Robinson and Jeff Grubb again, because obviously they've been getting a ton of flack over the lack of Twilight Princess and the Wind Waker HD news, uh, we have to take this in its proper context. They were wrong. They were also wrong about there being a Zelda 35th celebration. Beyond Game & Watch, I suppose. Uh, so we have to keep this in mind because these two are at it again. And despite being wrong, they're doubling down. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. Now, my personal expectation is we're going to get Twilight Princess HD and the Wind Waker HD on Switch eventually. We just had Fatal Frame Maiden of the Blackwater confirmed it's coming to Switch, and that is a game that didn't exactly sell that well and is on Wii U. Uh, I think it's just a no-brainer that the Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD will come to Switch at some point. After all, we've gotten a Zelda something every year of Switch. Uh, this year, uh, it happens to be Skyward Sword HD. Next year, the plan seems to be Breath of the Wild 2, uh, so we'll see. But here is what Andy Robinson and Jeff Grubb had to say in response to everything. We'll start with, with Jeff Grubb. Um, 
He goes on the 15th, and he said this shortly after the Zelda Direct ended, or the Zelda Direct, the Nintendo Direct ended. He said, I think we're not getting Wind Waker and Twilight Princess for the 35th because Nintendo isn't sure if we'll get Breath of the Wild 2 in 2022. So if it needs a Zelda thing next summer and fall, it's good to have that in reserve. Still, that's weird. I'm not pretending to have a perfect insight into Nintendo, but this lines up with the company's recent strategy of holding these kinds of games even after they're ready. Pikmin 3 Deluxe was done for months before we got it. Okay, that's his his his, his take anyways, his, his evidence is proof. Andy Robinson, his original tweet back in February 2017, uh, said, For those disappointed with the Skyward Sword remaster, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess are 100% coming this year. So that's at least one good 3D Zelda, which I, I remember chastising and being like, that's two good 3D Zeldas, but obviously personal opinions there. Uh, that is what he said back in February. Well, he looks like he's wrong. His response to that tweet on June 15th says, update on this for everyone who's now flooding my mentions. Predicting dates is a fool's game, and I should have never used 100% in the original tweet. Zelda fans, sit tight. So he's saying, hey, you know what? These games are going to come. They're just not coming when I thought they were going to come. And the problem I think you run into with people like Jeff Grubb, Andy Robinson, uh, and video game journalists is that they tend to, and it's not just them. This this happens with real leakers like Emily Rogers. This happens with, um, you know, other people, even like Digital Foundry, Tom Phillips, uh, Machizuki uh, out at Bloomberg. What happens when they talk about these things is they have factual information but they mix in their own opinions right which is something we do as a youtube channel i understand you want to create a conversation and throw your opinion in the mix but you can't treat your opinion as if it's fact as an example i've been predicting for a long time this is just a prediction i have no proof or evidence that switch pro if it does exist and does come out this year will be announced in September and released this holiday. I've been predicting that for a long time. This is despite Mach- you know Machizuki over at Bloomberg telling us we're getting it in September or October. So despite others saying it's going to be you know rumoredly announced before E3, none of that matters to me with my own personal predictions. Uh, but this is obviously Andy Robinson going like, hey, you know this is what I heard, and it's 100% coming this year, and he's wrong. Now he's double announced it. Okay, yeah, sure, I shouldn't have said that. Making it sound like he was just predicting it was coming this year when he definitively stated it was coming. You can't definitively state something, uh, you know, unless you want to say, like, it's your opinion. Like, if someone asked me, you know, in a, in a live stream, hey, Nate, uh, what do you think the chances are of Breath of the Wild 2 actually releasing in 2022? And I say 100%. Well, the, the question framed my response. The question was, what are my thoughts, right? What do I think? So in that case, it's clearly an opinion, not a fact, right? But that it gets hard when you throw out an un an unquestionable tweet on Twitter, like Andy Robinson did, where nobody was necessarily asking him. He wasn't replying to somebody. He's just throwing out there, it's 100% coming this year. You have to understand your rank and position. Me as a YouTuber, if I say something like that, it's pretty easy to point out it's an opinion. But when you're an actual person who works in the video game industry, works as a journalist in that industry, and your job is to give factual information, it comes across as well and, and as what it is and he never bothered to correct himself after by the way he knew people ran with his tweet and were reporting on it including other video game journalists out, outlets like ign and stuff and he didn't correct himself he didn't come out and be like oh yeah that was just an opinion he let it go him and jeff grubb both let it ride they let it ride they didn't correct anyone so I think it's interesting when you see these two people doubling back down on twilight princess hd and the wind Waker hd coming out this year uh, or coming out next year. I, actually, I feel like they're they're moving the goalposts, right? And you know, this is where you get into a little bit of that Nostradamus effect, where um, it, essentially, you know, if you keep saying and you keep moving the goalposts and you keep moving things, you're eventually going to be right. Uh, and 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 it, it's just a very difficult uh, world to live in because I don't really feel like Jeff Grubb and Andy Cortez were like trying to, in te- or Andy Robinson, sorry, was trying to mislead us. Uh, I think they truly believed, based on things that they have seen or heard, that it was coming this year and that we were going to get a 35th celebration, even though that, at this point, appears to be not true. So obviously, when we're talking about uh, this kind of information, uh, I don't know. I mean, what do people expect? I guess I could ignore 
uh, these journalists. But I also kind of look at things like, hey, look, there are certain things I want to talk about. And if a journalist is going to give me an excuse to talk about it, I will. I do believe, my personal belief, my opinion is the Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD are coming to Switch eventually. Maybe next year, maybe 2023. I have no idea. But that's just based on the track record of Nintendo porting basically everything we use, including now Fatal Frame, Maiden of the Blackwater, over to Switch. It just makes too much sense. We've gotten all the other Switch ports. Why would we not get these ones? That you know, it, it just I, I don't understand the logic behind that. And very well, Grezzo or somebody else could already be working on them. I have no idea. And obviously, there are some theories out there that well, maybe we are going to get them. Maybe AG and Omo was telling a a fib. And once Skyward Sword uh, HD is out and has been out for a month or two, they'll drop the details of the next Direct or something. That's always possible, but again, we have to work under the presumption that Nintendo's lying. And the only evidence I have of Nintendo lying intentionally has been for things related to hardware. Anyways, I don't know. I'm curious on your thoughts on all of this. Uh, it's always rough waters when you're covering rumors and stuff anyways, right? There's a reason I label everything the way that I do, uh, because... I don't know that any of this stuff is true. I'm just reporting what's out there and what is, sounds interesting to me. Twilight Princess HD and The Wind Waker HD are very interesting to me. They're some of my favorite games in the Zelda franchise, and I obviously want to play them on my Switch. So if there's going to be stuff that comes out about it, I'm probably going to talk about it like I just did in this video. But this is with the context of these people were wrong. But maybe they're right. I, it's a fickle thing. I, I do not envy their positions. I don't know if I was a, like a big video game journalist if I would open my mouth as much as these people do. It does create fun conversations, however, and it does give us something to talk about. And I am you know, doing this YouTube thing because I like having fun conversations and I like talking about things. So I guess they're feeding what I like to do, but are they necessarily feeding what you like? That's a question I have for you. What do you guys think about what these journalists are doing uh, and obviously how I'm handling it and other content creators handle covering them? Because is it what you want? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. I am Nathaniel Robert Jens from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll catch you in the next video. Yes.